Not sure if you all know this, but Adrian and I both have YouTube channels. My YouTube channel, if you can please subscribe, is Nevermore Records. Adrian's is Plastic Realm Toys. You can also follow us on Instagram at hnh underscore podcast and find us on facebook we even have a private group just send a request and we'll let you in follow our recording studio on instagram at nevermore underscore records underscore eptx and our guitar company on instagram at nevermore underscore guitars and all the equity i had in the house i instantly just took a heloc out oh and shit. fucking bought this six thousand dollar base <laughs> wow which shit. i didn't pay off for like 16 years holy shit so i probably paid like in interest probably like fucking 18 grand for that base. jesus oh yeah please God. tell me you still have it And welcome everybody to another episode of Half and Half Podcast. Hey. Hey. This is a coffee podcast, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Creamer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was making sure I was in the right place. Right, dude. <laughs> so um what's happening? We have a special guest today. A very special guest today. Go ahead, you want to introduce? Hey, what's up? This is Nick. So Nick. I need to ask you a question, and, and I even put it on my notes. I was like, I cannot pronounce your last sure. name for the fucking yeah. life of yeah. me, dude. Yeah, yeah. I changed, that's why I like online and stuff. I just did Shins, S-H-I-N-Z, because mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, it's an abbreviation. Actually, this kid, uh, Jeff Ficko from, he used to sing for the Faceless, gave uh -huh. me that nickname. Mm -hmm. He's like, Nicky Shins. But um, but it's it's like Shin and Jealous. Like you're jealous of your Shin. Shin Jealous. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shin Jealous. Like, yeah, Shin so Jealous. So what, what does that come from? What's that background? Uh, it's Greek. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, just, I think it's like the D and the Z. If it's S-C-H-E-N-D-Z-I-E-L-O-S. Okay. The D and the Z, you pronounce like a J. Wow, dude. Yeah, so wow. Shin Jealous. So I, 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 I mean, I just imagine that growing up, like that was a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. I failed kindergarten because I couldn't <laughs> spell it. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, a dude, joke I stole from a comedian. Maybe it was Dimitri. That's a good one, dude. Yeah. Well, you have the perfect last name for that joke. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. So first of all, dude, I just want to thank you for being here, man. Yeah. I truly appreciate it. I know you're on tour and it's yeah. a busy schedule for you. So for you to come down here, especially in this fucking heat. Yeah. And yeah. You, just, you just drove in and here we are. Can we get you? <laughs> yeah, dude. Video? I'm like, dude, <laughs> like bugging him. Like, come on, man. Like, no, but dude, I appreciate it so yeah, much, man. No problem. Yeah. I think it's cooler ac in here than the venue so yeah that's it's a, true it's a win that's a good point that's a very good point so um so yeah so we are going to go a little bit different in format today we usually yeah. have a bunch of segments when we don't have a guest yeah. so sure. we really just kind of want to like chat with you learn yeah. a little bit more about you um i know this is your first time meeting adrian so adrian as you guys being fellow bass players oh, that's yeah. not all we are <laughs> I, I just told you. I found out he's a fellow cat lover. That's oh, right. I told okay. you one day you were going to be replaced. I told you this day was coming. And I think today's the day. Oh, man. So the reason why we call it half and half is because we find that we're always, there's always on opposite ends of everything. And so oh, cool. um, that's just the way it is. But anyhow. Contrast. So Absolutely. yeah. So, uh, so you're in town tonight. You're playing with Havoc. Yeah. Correct? Yep. And uh, you guys are headlining the Rock House. Yeah. That's awesome. How's that tour been? I know we talked a little bit about it, but so far, how how's it going? How many? It, how how far in are you? Uh, I think we're. Let's see, we're about two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the tenth. Uh, no, eleventh show. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a couple weeks in. Uh, it's been awesome, man. It's crazy. I mean, like anytime I think any band comes back. Yeah, yeah. From uh, you know, post pandy. Um, there's a good influx, you know, cause like, ah, oh, we haven't seen, you know, they haven't toured in four years. Mm -hmm. So, and this band probably before that, like you could see them, you know, once every three months or something. Okay. It's just road dogs, just constantly on the road. So I think it was one of those things where like, oh, if you didn't like the rest of the package, you'd be like, ah, I'm not going to go to this one. I want to go to the next one. Right, right. Gotcha. Like, who else is on the package? But mm -hmm. it's one of those deals now where I think people are like, oh, I haven't seen this band in four years. And so... The shows are awesome. The energy is in, like the best I've ever seen. The merch lines are out the door right. like, all night, like an hour after the show still. Um, and just like tons of, uh, tons of stage diving. Oh, that's ah, badass. Awesome. Yeah, so much crowd surfing. Yeah. But it's like, it's like, 
now I'm, I'm that old guy, you know, who's, you know, I've had lots of family members uh, and friends have head injuries and stuff. And right. I'm just like, yeah, just like, keeping what are you my doing? eye out. Like, yeah, I'm just <laughs> like, dude, we need to like get like a, like a, a, a little talk or something first to be like, dude, don't jump until you make eye contact with the people that are going to catch you. <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. get it. But I think there's some of that old, like you get up on stage and then like the stage manager of the band or, you know, the, the or production, whoever it is, stage manager, like will shove you off if you're up there too long. Gotcha. Gotcha. That shit doesn't fly anymore. Um, because you know, nobody wants to be responsible for pushing you off instead of you jumping off and then you hurt yourself. Right, right, right. Responsible. So, but I think there's still a little bit of that like component or like fear people think about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe whatever. They're just like trying to be respectful and get on the stage and get off quick. Yeah, of course. But then like you you have to take that little second and like make sure that the people see you for their sake. Yeah, yeah. And for your sake. (laughs) Right, right. Because there's already been a couple of things happen on the tour. I was just like, I've seen, I watch it and like every night I'm like, oh, dude, (laughs) brutal. Yeah. Yeah, And I'm just like, dude, Helmets or something. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. You're not the one stage diving. You're talking about right. Oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah, the crowd. Like, dude, L.A. was just like. I mean, Berkeley was insane. L.A. was like. It was like every three seconds. Any any venues that are like disallow it. <sighs> we haven't run into one yet. Okay, but I guarantee you, you know, like uh, for that exact reason, right, like, right? Somebody somebody's gonna get a head injury. I'm not gonna say that it's going to happen, but yeah. it, it has happened before right. where somebody gets hurt and then they sue the venue. And so the venue goes, okay, or they, they try to sue the band. I mean, there's a lot of festivals where you have to have insurance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for that yeah. specifically. Band has to have their own separate insurance separate from the the um, concert okay. from the promoters just right. so that... Just in they, case. Yeah, just in case because, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's bodies smashing into each other and it's like, it's at your own risk, obviously, but right. you, you can't, like I remember watching this uh, Pearl Jam documentary uh, twenty, I think it was Cameron Crow did, and there was that one show that Pearl Jam had um, where like the barricade broke and um, oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, like, like a bunch of people died right and right were, like yeah. it just changed the whole trajectory of the band because then you're like oh shit like yeah. we're supposed yeah, yeah. to be providing a fun entertaining environment for people to have a blast and then you know now we're, we're are we responsible for you know like we didn't play that show these people would be alive exactly so yeah. I start, that shit starts to mess with your head and you're just like man just right. fucking make sure the eye contact is there yeah, <laughs> before absolutely. you jump and then people catch it i was gonna go get some uh some like pool you know floaties oh. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like if there's these pizza slices on Amazon I'm going to get. Uh-huh. Um, they're like six-foot pool pizza slices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd probably be 250 bucks to get a whole pizza. But I was like, how rad would it be if you had like – a person on each pizza all together as a giant pizza. And you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All over That'd be badass. Yeah, but people <laughs> like, you know, when when somebody's f- on a floaty getting passed around, you're kind of, you can get bumped with the floaty. Yeah. Right, right, fine. right. When it's somebody's foot or somebody's head hitting your other head. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, but so anyways, the the energy's just been insane. Dude, Ton, that's tons great, of man. Tons of uh, like palpable energy. Yeah, right. You know, that's which is awesome, awesome, man. It's cool. So, um, I know like Havoc is who you're on tour with right now, but for our listeners, I know you've been, dude, you've been in like a shit ton of bands yeah. Yeah. and are Too currently in a shit ton of bands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, any that you want to mention? Yeah. Um, so going to be doing some stuff. I've been, you know, consistently with, uh, Cephalic Carnage since 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a new record pr- coming out, probably should be done in like 2032, Ish. at this <laughs> <Nice>. rate <laughs> almost sounds there like, sounds like uh, us yeah. I, I can't wait <laughs> yeah I think we're at like 2035 around so, there yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. gonna be a good year yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a good one like we're saving it to like make sure we don't cross promote with other stuff yeah um, at, least, at least now we have a goal we gotta say we gotta <laughs> Nick yeah, yeah. Yeah. His, we gotta, gotta do beat ours. his record <laughs> yeah um, so that we still play with that like um, we've been doing some fests uh, we'll be playing the Decibel Beer and Metal Fest okay cool in, um, in Denver I think that's like December 20 something oh nice so that'd nice. be fun our friends red cord will be playing that again oh and, um, nice bunch of good friends yeah they're back kind of doing that my, and charn my drummer from job for a cowboy mm-hmm. uh, x x job for a cowboy uh he'll still play with us here and there but um but he's playing with the red cord okay too so we'll get to do that wow. um and then job for a cowboy is doing um blue ridge rock fest oh nice yeah which is like a hundred and f- i think it's like a hundred almost 150 bands and it's, it's a, been a while since you guys have played huh yeah we haven't played since 2016 and, okay and that was the only show that we had played in three years oh wow so, yeah wow. so it's really been 10 years since we've crazy since we played so um that's gonna be cool and um uh, there is a uh uh some tunes we've been working on for fucking i remember having some of these songs 
emailed in like 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So how many, okay. they've been through a 150,000 revisions. It's like 20X filtered vodka at this point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just water. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where the, the file name is like final dash one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Final, final, yeah, final, final. For real, for real. <laughs> exactly. No, no cap final. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel you on that. Uh, any other bands you want to mention? Mm. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's so many bands. I know, dude. That's why I was like, let's get it out. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, I'll be putting together this record. Um, EP. We're going to bring it down to an EP from a record, but called The Mana. Okay. Um, that's uh, with my buddy Zach, who you know kind of brought me into Fall at Carnage. And then Danny Walker is on drums. And... Um, this cat Igor um, from Colorado, one of my really good friends, is on bass. And then I don't know if we're going to add a second guitar or not, but I'm just doing vocals. Oh, and, shit. Oh, and nice. Project, okay. Which is cool. Right. Because um, I've always wanted to do that. Um, and I'm like just digging really hard to, to do something other than like Cookie Monster and then High. Right, and right, and right. To do something else. But it's like doing a range of stuff. It's like, oh, he's trying to be Mike Patton. You know? it's right, like you right. Do anything of course, but of course. Outside of that. Yeah. Right. You know? Um, but so I got that. And then, um, uh, there's a band I'm a really big fan of this band called nuclear power trio. Mm. Um, that is, uh, I, I've been kind of working closely with the bassist, um, and kind of showing him some stuff and he's been taking lessons from me, but, um, they have a band or they have a record coming out called wet ass plutonium. Oh, okay. And that'll be out on um, July 28th. That's badass. And mm -hmm. that's like an instrumental project, right? Yep. All instrumental. Yeah. Um, it's just a, a band, you know, uniting for world peace, you know, but the record's crazy, man. It goes all it, over the place. It, dude, that's awesome. It dude. really yeah. is. Yeah. There's Samba. There's, yeah. um, uh, there's like, a, you know, some classical, like Debussy-esque stuff. There's like Meshuggah type stuff. Um, there's sax. There's real horns. Dude, there's the horn, the horns part is what got me. Oh, when weird. I heard the horns, I was like, dude, that's amazing. Yeah, Adrian's right? a trumpet player over here. Oh, no way. Yeah. Was Tight. was yeah. That's he awesome. He just plays a skin flute now. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> better, yeah. Better than anybody I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have some sax on there. Got a guy doing the. I think it's the ball. That's sax. awesome, man. <laughs> but uh, then there's uh, ball, the, the uh, real harp. We got real harp. Um, yeah, the guys. The guys just kind of went all nuts, and they just kind of. You know, um, it's, just it's like, a it's a project where those they don't have to. Um, there's no like, oh, is this too pretty? Right, right, is this right. part too funky? <laughs> right, you know? right. Rocky number uh, one, <laughs> always, dude. Number one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's cool though. It's that's really fun. And then, um, and then obviously the king, the king homies. Okay. Um, we've got. I don't know. I think it's there's three. What did you do? Three tracks on drums? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tracked uh, we tracked three just recently. Yeah. Okay. And cool. then I know there's a few, but I I know when I was in LA with you guys, you guys wrote that yeah one fucking song. It's a really good fucking song, and I always get that shit stuck in my head. Oh, dude. is it the uh, the one with the kind of like three, just a really simple chorus? Yeah, the three yeah, note yeah, chorus. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a song I had in my computer for like a really long time. Did you? Oh, okay, uh -huh. yeah, because yeah. you were like the foundation of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, "Do you got anything?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, I do have something. I don't know if it'll fit with you guys, but uh, it did. It worked, and it, it actually worked really well. Because then it's like, oh, then it's like the ticket again, ticket again, yeah, yeah, ticket again, ticket again, ticket again, ticket again, and then just like, I was like, that's what kind of my thing when I write songs is like, I can write cool parts, and I can kind of have parts go into other parts, but like. It's so weird to be like, what's a what's a good chorus? Right, right. And like a good chorus, for the most part, I guess is basically like, well, sometimes you can have you know instrumental hooks. Right, you know, right. For of the course. most parts, it's like whatever sets up the foundation for a great vocal. Hook. Right, right. And like that, that's what Eddie is so Eddie and, and Pepe are so good at doing is just like, well, three three chords, dude. Right, right, <laughs> that's right. That's all right, you need. Right. Yeah, but yeah. It works so good because then you have this juxtaposition of like all this technical shit. But then the chorus is just like, nah, boom, it hits you. Yeah, nah. it's the perfect like hook. It's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. I had a hard time though, man, I'll be honest, because we were trying to give Pepe this big fucking sound, right? Okay, yep. And uh, all I kept thinking in the back of my head, especially because of him being a bass player, is like, fuck, man, I, I don't want, I don't want to... I don't want the signal to interfere with fucking Nick's bass. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's uh, that's a, that's always the 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 line, right? Where you're like, you got to share the low end. Yeah, you exactly. know. I always would get into it like we're like getting pockets, like right? Car carving little pockets yeah. of, of room, right? So you're like, okay, 
if the the sub from the you know your lows from the kicks are going to be what i don't know 40 yeah about yeah, yeah right about. so then it's like find a pocket where like i can have my own uh, slightly above it right you know, exactly it yeah so that way you're, those tones like actually get heard but don't interrupt that signal yeah exactly because you want that creamy you know i like the like punchy creamy bass and yeah like of the course s- stupidest words to describe no no no, no but it makes total perfect. sense yeah. right he's a real big uh low-end high-end guy I, I, i'm like yeah, dude where are the fucking mids ba- bass and treble and fuck mids like just like really a <laughs> skosh of mids <laughs> yeah dude, just a, a little bit just just enough to to cut through you know what I mean? so like like not a full smile but like a little yeah just a little yeah, grin exactly <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but then it also depends on on what bass you're using right like yeah. f- fender for me a lot of treble a lot of bass a little bit of mids but when you get on an ibanez that's a whole, a whole other different game yeah. but you know I mean? and actually i'm glad you brought that up so when i was with you in la we were happened to be there at the same time because of nam and i know uh we had a conversation about the bases that you use yeah do you want to mm-hmm. talk a little bit about those sure that was actually one of my questions here. there you go good Boom. job yeah so um so i've been you know, I, I started playing bass because we could never find a bass player for one, mm-hmm. um, and um, I wanted to be a singer. You know, I always sung. I, I sing like I, 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 I subconsciously sing. I don't know that I'm doing it. You know, but right. like, ever since I was like two years old, my mom's like, "You sing when you go in and out of a building. If you're going in and out of the bathroom, like there's like all these different times that I sing, and I've, I love the instrument of the voice, and I love singing." Um, but then, you know, getting into, you know, uh, I think it was like maybe like Metallica 1 and mm-hmm. not even the solo. It's just like the intro riff. That gotcha. I was like, That's a co- really cool sound. I want to do that. So then my cousins were getting into guitar playing. And so I, I got a guitar and I could play like, you know, just shitty Nirvana riffs and like, you know, the intro to Enter, to enter Sandman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think our age group, that's, that's what that's it was. What you did. Yeah, All yeah. of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nirvana or Metallica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, but then, you know, my brother played bass. My dad got my brother the bass. And so um, he would, uh, we would just jam, you know. But it was so funny. We think weren't really listening to each other. <laughs> just, just going like, off. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. in the same room. just yeah. doing, and it, Maybe it did sort of start to coalesce. But um, but I would pick the bass up and, and slap the bass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I don't know, Paul Rudd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, slap um, the bass. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but so, yeah, and I always loved it. And it was really fun. But then um, um, started forming a band with my friend. Like seventh grade we did it. Then took a couple years off. And then like 18, I was like, let's uh, let's do a band, you know. And um, so I was like, I'm going to do guitars and guitar and sing. And then um, he came across this uh, Mudvayne LD50 record. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we just got yeah. super baked. And listen to the entire thing. Like we were listening to it on the way to some place. Right. And we were really baked in the car and like we were like, we have to finish this. And right. Just listen right. to the entire record. And I was just so blown away that like the bass, you know, I mean Metallica, Cliff Burton, of course, you know, Claypool, mm-hmm. right? Um, there's plenty of, of uh you know, Steve Harris, you know, there's plenty of examples of the bass doing this, but I'd never seen the guitars like and the bass flip rolls to where right. it was like let's invert the rolls and have the guitar kind of hold the rhythm down for right. the section and then have the bass even especially in verses that makes sense play the main you know motif or be right. the main melody and the sound of his bass you know and so I heard that and I was like oh I want to do that Dude, I'll play bass Ryan Martini is definitely up there oh yeah in like the top fifteen bass players of all time oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I mean in metal for me like I think he's my my number one for sure yeah. i'd say he's my number one influence um but i would have some vic wooten thrown in there. oh, oh yeah. yeah absolutely right so yeah. like um but so of course you know i'm 18 and i'm like what what is he playing you know and i was like it was a warwick okay yeah. what's his amp and the ampeg okay what's you know like i would just scour back when I mean, that was almost pre-internet times, right? We yeah. had to get Bass Player Magazine and hope they did a gear rundown Hell with them. Yeah, you know? yeah like, exactly. All right, so I just bought whatever Warwick I could. Actually, my dad gave me this old Chips bike. I think it was a 1986 Yamaha Maxim mm-hmm. 650. Oh, wow. Chips style bike for graduation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For high school graduation. It was funny. And um, with the, Did it have the glass oh, thing yeah. in the front? Yeah, the big things, the big, like, <laughs> big bags and stuff. It was yeah. a funny first bike for That's an 18-year-old awesome though, skinny kid to yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so I, I I wanted this bass so bad I sold that motorcycle. Mm. I bought a Ducati anyways. Uh, but um, 
So I sold that bike and used the money to buy my first Warwick. Mm, you know? And that was a Warwick Fortress Masterman. I got it from like base, um, ba- not the base central in Florida. There was one in Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so then just that, that sound for me, just like Warwick growl, you know, where it was uh, a really punchy, growly, gurgly space worm mm-hmm. type of a sound, you know, which just found out was just, you know. So then um, eventually I got sucked into buying this bass from this guy in uh, Georgia called uh, Warrior Basses. Okay. Because they were, it, it, I mean, aesthetically amazing, but the playability was just insane com- mm-hmm. compared to the Warwick. And so I took a, I took a, I had, been uh, working at this job, the corporate just like sales job doing telemarketing. Mm-hmm. And so I saved up some money and I bought a house and it, all the equity I had in the house, I instantly just took a HELOC out oh, and shit. fucking bought this $6,000 <laughs> base, <laughs> Wow, which shit. I didn't pay off for like 16 years. Holy shit. So I probably paid like in interest, probably like fucking 18 grand for that. Base. Jesus. Oh yeah. Please God. tell me you still have it. I do. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and I've come close to selling it. I've gotten some offers close to like three grand. And I was like, man, maybe I just suck this one up and keep it. But, um, but this t- tone wasn't quite there for me, you know, on that, on that particular one. So then eventually a buddy of mine, uh, Fred he plays for this band Carnifex. And he's like, Oh, you should talk to Chris from Warwick. And then I met my buddy, Chris, who became a really good friend of mine, Chris Kunitz from Warwick and was able to get, um, you know, get a hundred percent deal with them. So I got a, got a thumb finally mm-hmm. and then uh, a custom shop streamer and then um a whole slew of their stuff but i always stick to the same thing it's like uh you know naturally compressed woods mm-hmm. like oven call it's also called shedua there's mm-hmm. other two other things it's called as well but um wengi mm-hmm. um, no, that shit's that shit's badass yep. it's just hard to work with yes hard to work with and tough to tough to source mm-hmm. you yep. know um but i just like that like to where I like it so that like basically like with fresh strings, mm-hmm. my EQ's flat, uh, it's passive. I run into like an API or a Neve, compress it, it's done. Wow, you know like yeah, I don't yeah yeah I don't really like I mean unless I'm going for like a gridded out thing, which sometimes I'll you know do that, which, mm-hmm. which obviously the dark glass stuff or whatever. But um, but yeah, so then um ended up leaving Warwick. I didn't really leave Warwick. I just was just like hey, I'm gonna see other people. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, <laughs> um, ran, it ran its course. Right, yeah, and we're still really good friends. Actually, mm-hmm. the the the, um, the son of the HP, the owner, is actually now the CEO, and he's taking the company over. Oh wow! And we just parted again last. Yeah, we're we're really good friends, and I still play the basses, and I still record with him. Um, but I'd been trying to go over to this company MTD forever, mm-hmm. right? Michael Tobias Design, my homie Evan Brewer. Like I brought Evan Brewer into Warwick. And then he left Warwick, went to MTD, and was trying to get me to go to MTD. And I love the bases, but it was always like, there's so many people over there in the booth at NAMM that are so good, I would just never even get up to them. <laughs> but anyways, that guy, the Daniel from MTD, ended up, he's a metalhead, and uh, he was like, yeah, let me build you a, a basis. So I pretty much like had him be like, all right, let's use Oven Call. Let's use Wingy Fingerboard. Oh, let's fuck yeah. Like do Bell Brass, mm-hmm. bell, bell Brass Frets. Like I, this is kind of like my tone now, right. you know? Um so that's kind of where I'm at with it, but they do have some more, a uh, little more high end and low end, I think, than than the Warwicks, um, which is nice because there's some more versatility in it. But it was funny, like for King, right? I remember um, doing those metal injection, like the Slay at Home things, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And we yep. did like um, we did a, a Sabbath cover, it was Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, and then I think we did bre- uh, maybe it was Breathe. I did mm-hmm. Breathe in the Water. Okay. Um, and I just did my my war at that time. I didn't have my MTDs. It was my Warwick Dolphin, and into an uh, API Transformer LX, which is basically just a you know a pedal version of a API right. you know channel, and then um, uh, the compression. You know, I think I was using uh, I don't even know. It was might have even just been the the Logics you know mm. optical compressor whatever, but just compression. No EQ, sent it, and they were like, "This is amazing." Really? Like, Where did you get? How did you get this yeah, bass? Yeah, how did yeah. you get this bass tone? <laughs> but it was funny because then, like, just did this that this other song for King mm-hmm. that's going to be coming out soon, and I the exact same everything. Oh, really? And this, yeah. And the same engineer was like, "Hey, man, uh, can you use that setup from the from the the previous songs that right. we did?" And I was like, "It's literally." The everything is the exact <laughs> wow, same. Wow, dude. There's nothing different. Yeah. But so, that says a lot about the bass itself, man. Right. Like, yeah. that's oh, huge. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I could think about that was different is I was like, well, the Sabbath stuff I think we did in 
like standard. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. this King stuff was dropped down to C. So I was like, did dropping down, you know, a step and a half or whatever it is, ch- change it totally so much mm. that the engineer literally thought it was a completely different bass. Right. That's true. Right? Wow. The mm. fundamentals just shifted to mm-hmm. where it was like uh, too punchy for him or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I know your wheels are turning in terms of uh, basses and stuff. What do you got? Well, that that was my main one. But do you do you, okay? So you have like one bass that you will forever say if if my bases are gone, house is burning. This is the one. I have like five. Five. <laughs> 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 I mean, there's at least at least like like my green custom shop streamer mm. with the Buckeye Burl and the, the green LEDs, the Dolphin, just because like it's like. It's the bass that I just like, I you know, forever that I would just plug in and not have to do anything, and then like, oh, that, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, my my two my two, two new MTDs, yeah, I would save them all. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like which cat would you save? <sighs> <laughs> Shit, question. you have <laughs> your your head was turning. You're like, oh, yeah, dude, well, I'm not bringing well, here, here's for sure. Here's the thing: I collect bases, I have cats, and I collect toys. Okay. So if my house were on fire. I'm going to say, you know what? Fuck it. You all are going. I'm not even going <laughs> to. Dude, he has one of the biggest toy collections on the planet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what? Forever, I said the first thing I would save, uh, outside of obviously, you know, animals and, you know, highly valuable stuff or whatever, but irreplaceable was my passport. Mm, and yeah. not because I needed it to travel, but like it's got all, you know, my two passports now have, you know, it's like a collectible for you. Yeah, it's like 80 pages of all the yeah. places I've been. It's like proof that I hmm. saw this planet that's while cool. I was here. Yeah, you know? that's a good one. So on that note, I actually have it as a question. You and I spoke about, there was a city that you said, other than Denver, was your favorite city. I think we had this conversation. Yeah. So on that note, for our listeners, what out of all the cities you've been to, what has been your favorite that you're just like, okay, if I didn't have to live in Denver, this is where I would be? El Paso, for sure. <laughs> Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm um, always trying to find ways to get out of here. <laughs> um, shit, what was it, man? Um, I can't remember either. I know. I'm trying to remember what I said back then. I, and it was probably pretty defined. I mean, it used to, it might have used to have been like Portland or, or Seattle, but it's definitely not that anymore. Yeah. So anywhere um, out, out of the country? <laughs> out of the country wise, um, I really like Santiago. Okay. Chile was yeah. really cool. I like that. It was really pretty. Um, Australia, yeah, was, was really cool. What? Although it's the last time I was now, the last time I was there was like, whoa, it's gotten a little authoritarian. <laughs> that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's what I, I see a lot of shit. Yeah, but I guess that's kind of happening everywhere. Um, I loved Shibuya. I loved, loved Tokyo. Mm. Tokyo was really cool. Awesome. Um, but it, I'm trying to think if I had to. Yeah, that's a really good question. Nowadays, everything's changed. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It continues to change. You know what answers used to be? I mean, I would used to be like, yeah, Denver never would never consider leaving, but like it's getting, it's getting to that point. It's getting so expensive. And I've always told him that if I'm gonna, I'm gonna live anywhere, Denver's where I would go. Yeah, yeah. that's what, we just had this conversation in the car. Yeah. I said the same thing. Yeah, yeah dude. my wife is ready to go. If I were to say tomorrow, yeah, she would do or it. Out. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's. I mean, it's still amazing. It is. And I think, like, if you compare it to, like, if somebody from L.A. were to move, they'd be like, this traffic's not bad at all. You know, right. but for us growing up there, you're like, this feels like L.A. traffic to us now. It's like, yeah. it doesn't matter when I go. Used to be, like, you know, 4.30 to 5. Or, excuse me, like, 4.45 to, like, 5.30 would be, like, crunchy, you know. And then it was, like, it expa- it's, like, every year it expanded five more minutes more. Mm, gotcha. on either side. So now it's, like, 2 p.m. Right, right. Like uh, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Do you think it's because a lot of people are flocking over there? Because I oh, know yeah. that's happening in Austin. That's oh, so what yeah. I hate about Austin. Yep. Yeah, the weed thing brought in a lot of people. But yep. the weed, it wasn't just weed. Weed was a, a component for sure. But um, a lot of tech companies. Mm. So, like, you know, Twitter has a building there. Facebook mm. does. Um, uh, just as a, And then oil, too. Oil is really big there. Yeah. Um, which, you know, those guys actually bring in a lot of money and pay a lot of, you know, provide a lot of stuff. It's also the fact that when the New World Order takes over, that's the place to be. Yeah. Like Denver Airport. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like if, if it's all real, right? Yeah. And like San Andreas does go or, you know, what, you know, like Denver will be. The, the mecca of the, the world. It will. It, yeah. it feels like that. I mean, they moved um, so much shit has moved there. Yeah, yeah. You know, even, uh, you know, I think we're the number one. 
if I'm not mistaken, the number one the, the, the number one p- position that people work, the number one company that people work for in Colorado is the government. Oh, the wow. Most government yeah. jobs out Dude. of it. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's kind of crazy. And like, there's still room to grow too, which is it where you're like, you can still be all I-25 if you go north and south. Right, right. Like we're like, oh, another 10 years and this will all be connected. Right. From Pueblo all the way to, to Fort Collins. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you can see it now. You look on your left and right and you're like, there's no piece of ground in Denver that somebody's not like, look, there's a uh, 10 foot piece of grass. Let's put it's, a building there. Oh, you know? wow, man. That's crazy. It's insane. My, my neighborhood alone right now, there's about 15,000 new units about to open up. Really? It's like eight buildings and like some really cool, you know, stuff, but it's also like, Oh, the one bedrooms are going to be 30, uh, 3200 bucks. Right, right, right. You Holy know? shit, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, what? Oh, shit. Hold on. What happened here? You blew it. Yeah, no, it right. stopped recording? <laughs> no, no. We're actually still recording. Oh, I was like, this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> just the sound went out. So we'll just keep going. We'll keep rolling. Cool. It's going. So I've always, um, if I do decide to move to Ven- Denver, yeah. in my mind, I've always had an all bass album. There we go. Right? Yeah. Are you down? Hell you yeah. In? Yeah. Tell course. me when you're ready. I'm yeah. ready. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Nothing but bases. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You ready to record it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard? Um, he, he thinks I'm lying. <laughs> no, no, not at <laughs> all. In my no. mind. Yeah. Have you heard? I mean, you, you've obviously heard Victor stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We just got like, even those tours we would do where we'd have four bases up on stage. Yeah. So we'd have, you know, maybe a stand up bass, somebody just rocking the low lows, and then. You know, somebody will have like a six and then somebody's on like a tenor yeah. or a piccolo and mm-hmm. then somebody's in the regular range. And um, yeah, that m- reminds me of my first band actually. So we hear, I hear Mudvayne, LD50, right? And we go and try to like <laughs> pretty much bite that sound, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we got the current, this kid that used to play bass, we got him to play guitar and basically be like, hey man, don't play much. Just, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be about the bass. But um, that incarnation fell apart and then we were like, we kind of became anti-guitar, mm. you know? To where really? We, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So where we were like, man, yeah. fuck, fuck you. Fuck, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck you high-pitched squealers, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> so we were like, because it's cool to have the bass be up and doing the, you know, the more melodic stuff using yeah, yeah. the upper register of the neck, but then you do lose the low end, right? right? So we we're like, what if we had two basses? Like, yeah. one, you know, so we trade back and forth. So some, somebody's always playing the low end. Right. So then what we did is we took um, AB pedals, we ended up finally grabbing, getting the good ones from Leela, right? We do an A-B rig. Bass goes into the, the A-B pedal. A goes to a bass amp, you know, its own effects, and then to the bass amp, bass cab. Mm-hmm. B went to, like, a, I think we were using a DBX, like, 2231 or whatever, and carved the f- frequency up a little bit, right? And then into a Mesa dual rec. Oh, wow. And a 4x12. And the then f- we ended up having full stacks. Yeah. So each bass had, you know, four different potential combination yeah. I mean, four different combinations of what could happen like you know both bases going through just the guitar side for a part and yeah. then when you kick in right the ab pedal and just these giant massive things so that was really fun though we were that band was called ain matter dude that sounds cr- fucking it's crazy. cool I'll, I'll show you the guy dave otero that does so fall carnage and cal decapitation mm-hmm. and tetrarch and um arch spire and all this stuff oh, yeah. he was, he's been our guy forever and he recorded that um back in 2005 okay no rep- no sound replacement on the drums or anything nice. and it's just two basses and it's like it was almost like the the eighth string sound mm-hmm. kind of bef- gotcha. before before that, they, oh, even before yeah. Meshuggah got the eight strings because right. i was also doing a, a tenor where i'd go a d g c f right so the a the lowest string was an 80 gauge so it was 80 60 40 32 and then the last f was plain steel 18 gauge no wrap on it Mm -hmm. so like just sounded like a giant guitar what the fuck yeah and running out through a fucking a full stack mesa was like the fucking heaviest it was awesome i'll I'll send you that record because you can't it's not on anywhere but it's fun but Uh, you can you can totally have like no guitars Right, yeah, and yeah it's yeah. awesome. I'm ready when you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when do we start? <laughs> Let's go. So, so on that note, so I'm assuming, like, what do you think of bands like? Uh, what was that one? Uh, I've seen them play a couple times. Uh, Royal Blood. So, yeah, yeah, somebody you know, just brought they, them up the other day. Um, I haven't heard I'm, much lately, but I think yeah, I've they seen just some released some clips. It's just one bassist and a drummer, a drummer right? Yeah, and it just kind of affects it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's cool. I, I think even what we found with that Ain Matter thing though was that it was like. If you end up playing similar stuff or like one guy's doing this, one guy's doing a harmony, it's like I think about like uh Sanchez from from uh 
Havoc brought this up one time. He's like, you think about like classical composers, right? Mm -hmm. And like the amount of voices that they have. Right. And so what you can, the ideas you can harmonically present and enrich right. with that, as opposed to most metal bands, you'll have two guitars. They're probably doing a harmony of the same thing. And then the bass is just playing the root of it. Mm -hmm. So you're right. really only saying like one thing. Right. Right. right? Harmonically. So, um, we kind of found that like with just the two bases that we were like, God, oh, there's, there's room for other mm -hmm. stuff here, you know? And so I think like if, as long as like people and you just can't step on each other's toes, it's like if both bases are in the low part of the neck, it doesn't make sense. It's right. Like Absolutely. Exactly. Two elephants in a small room. Right. You know? So it's like if somebody's down low, I'm going to be up high or right. somewhere in the mids. Like you keep the frequencies separate so that you're not like right. muddying up each other's shit. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. That's, that's interesting though, man. But the way you describe like just the kind of the, the setup, dude, I would imagine live that's yeah. like, why was, do we need a fucking PA? <laughs> it was, it was, it was huge. Yeah. The only thing that I, that I'm now realizing is that I was like the actual decibel, the volume decibel difference when we would go from just say the two guitar sides to then kicking on mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, bass sides mm -hmm. like for the choruses or whatever the part right. that we were trying to have come in and slam like was actually like it's a massive difference in volume so that's the yeah. only thing but something that most of the engineers ended up kind of figuring it out i mean it works really well on this record so so <clears throat> what was the miking situation like for that yeah, so we do, you know. <laughs> that was before. I don't even think dudes were taking a DI. They yeah, were just that's what I was they say. were just mic in the bass cab, yeah. mic in the bass cab, guitar and guitar. I would imagine there was fucking tons of phase issues. You know? Yeah, we didn't even know what phase was. Right, <laughs> exactly. There yeah, was a yeah. band that practiced next to us called Phase. That's what we <laughs> <laughs> thought about. Yeah, dude. I mean, I think. I've only like mic'd a bass amp like once in my whole life. I'm like, why the fuck? Yeah. I don't do it anymore. I, yeah. I, I love a, a DI sound. But it's, I think for a setup like that, it's yeah. almost like you've got to. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, w I was going to do this one thing where I'm going to do for it. Because I have, I've got a, actually a couple, I think about four, four songs that Martini and I have been putting together. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, two basses, right? And um, I got my, I got my old drummer was going to do it, but. Um, we'll see if whatever ended up happening with that because like him and I kind of butt heads, mm -hmm. and so I was like, you can't, you're not gonna mess up this thing with Ryan, right? Um, and then Ryan just got s is super busy with Soft Neglare, and then obviously Mudvayne now. So, but the songs are really really cool, and um, shit, where was I going with that? Oh, the 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 di versus right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh shit, it was that's right. there. <laughs> Yeah. I need a, I need another uh, so I need to chew on some lion's mane. <laughs> Dude, speaking fuck, of lion's mane, he hates that lion's shit now, mane, man. Yeah, that really? shit fucked me up. Really bad, bad. Why? Long story short, when I was taking, I, t I was on a bottle and a half. I was on the half of the second bottle. Right. But I had noticed I started feeling like I felt like these weird depressions and like just fogginess, right? And I didn't, I don't know what it was. I just chalked it up to. At the time, my grandpa passed away. Like, a bunch of mm. shit was happening. So I was like, oh, maybe it's just that. And then well, on YouTube, all I watch is fitness shit and diet shit. And, you know what I mean? So this guy did this long like hour video of how Lions made fucked him up. He went to a neuroscience. He went to everybody. And they were like, yeah, dude, that shit fucked you. And I was like, God damn it. The same things that he went through. I was experiencing. Wow. Okay. So he yeah. fucking stopped and came in. We even we did a whole episode, I think, where we were just talking about it because yeah. he was just like, dude, like I feel like a different person. I was sad all the time. Yeah. Like, really? Anything wow. would set me off to like, <laughs> yeah, suck it back, the tear back. In, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like it was weird, and I, I never felt like that. That's crazy. Yeah. I wonder. I'm, I mean, everybody's individual biochemistry yeah, is absolutely. different, and yeah, uh, yeah so the, the the one size fits all thing for medicine is never a good idea. Right. But I think you know, experimentation with small. Yeah. Amounts and then being able to aware yeah, if of it. it's natural i'll fuck with it you know yeah. what i mean but like weird shit no but sure so, so you know I, I always do my research before i i introduce anything into my regimen right and i did my research online and it was all there wow Lo and behold i was that one fucking yeah, guy shit. with this yeah. other dude on YouTube. i wonder if it's like you know so, some of these different ones that i take um about you know how things work like sympathetically with each other mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. um like for example like L-theanine and coffee right. yeah. work really well together right, because right. it's sort of like not an antidote to the caffeine, but I can have caffeine. Uh, and then if these drinks have L-theanine in it, it takes away that kind of like 
almost like an anxiety part right. of too much caffeine right. and gives you kind of a smooth thing. That's why like green tea has L-theanine yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. So that's why kind of people are like, oh, if coffee's too much for you to do green tea. And I was like, oh, it's because it's got this other component in right, there. Right, so it makes that's sense. That's like sort of taking the the edgy part of the yeah, caffeine yeah, yeah. off. So you're getting the energy and the focus, but not like, oh, <laughs> right, you know right, I mean? right. Dude, yeah. L-theanine and magnesium. Yeah. I sleep like a baby. Really? Oh my God. He yeah. introduced me to that. Yeah, yeah. That wow. Shit. I, I feel like, I think Pippa's over there in the room probably just like doing the- Doing shit. He's like, good. fuck <laughs> you guys. But uh, yeah, I think it has something to do with the court. But anyways, yeah. L-theanine and magnesium, man. You want to sleep like a fucking baby? Oh, Dude, fuck. You know what I did recently in the past couple of months because I do shift work? Uh huh. I threw ashwagandha into that mix. Ooh, I'm fucking out, dude. Really? Out. Ashwagandha's good. I've been taking this stuff called um, Sigma, Sigma from uh, Gorilla Mind. Is the, oh, the okay. company? Yeah, more and plates, it's, more dates. Yep, that dude. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'll like, I've never seen anybody be like, here's a two hour dissertation on why every single ingredient <laughs> is in here and why the ingredients that you would think would yeah. be in here aren't in here and why. And uh, yeah, so it was ashwagandha. Um, Tonka Ali yeah. and mm-hmm. uh, Fadoja Agrestis. Yeah, see, the Fadoja I stayed away from because Andrew Huberman says the possibility of your testes fucking getting <laughs> engorged. I was like, man, I don't know about that. <laughs> really? <laughs> the Tonka did nothing for me. Really? Absolutely nothing. I did two bottles and then I felt the exact same. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've like been trying to see, it's probably been like three months. Um, but. I guess I would say that I didn't notice that much of a difference. But he was just saying, you know, you can get two to four hundred points more, you on, know, on the uh, testosterone. Yeah, yeah. per uh, deciliter or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I'm kind of think about it. It's kind of expensive. I don't know if I'm noticing <laughs> that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I, I love about Nick, though, is like we could go from music, technical talk about gear and recording yeah. to fucking straight into the, and because we do this all the time. And yeah. people are like, um, and we always say, like, should we just do a fucking, uh, a health and fitness podcast because yeah. we end up like meshing everything yeah. together. Hell yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's we awesome. just said right now, it's like you were, he and I in, in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our facial hair is almost a blend. I know, right? <laughs> Mine is a, it's like a, <laughs> a gradient. So, um, I know we're talking a lot about, uh, basis. Um, but we, we do one segment that we did want to do today and yeah. it should be relatively easy and, and it might take a little bit of just kind of thinking through it. So sure. what we could do is we can say our, our, yeah, our piece first. And uh, so we do a, a segment where we call it Let It Riff, where we just talk about one riff to just not really just share like, dude, this riff is great and this is why. Yeah. Um, okay. And it's just real simple. It's not even anything detailed. But um, you want to go first? Yes. The riff that I chose today for Let It Riff was Nine Inch Nails Wish. Like, just so simple. Yeah. But it fucking just brings you in. You know what I mean? That's a good one. Oh, dude, that. Love it. Yeah. So I wasn't, that's, that's my letter. I, I wasn't sure wish. where you were going to go. I've been on a very like heavy tip lately. Um, I know. So he, who, who did you challenge me with? That, that band, Cru- what is it? Uh, Recently? Yeah. On our last episode, you challenged me with, Cr- I can never say the fucking name of that band. The la- Oh, Krungbin. Krungbin. Yeah. Krungbin. Dude, they're, they're interesting. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like something my old drummer would have come up with. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Weird. Uh, interesting kind of like mellow anyways i listened to that shit so much i was like i gotta fucking like listen to something heavy so i went old school i see you're going off from the challenge i get it (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i i I threw on some morbid angel and dude i forgot how good uh the song um i always have to write it down because i always forget where the slime live dude such a good fucking riff i can't hum it for you right now but you, I know you. You don't listen to it, so no, you got to go fucking listen to it your after this episode, dude. Absolutely God, dude. not. <laughs> that riff was like life changing for me when I was younger, dude. I heard it and I was like, "This is like the heaviest thing I've ever fucking heard." So, anyways, that's so, awesome. I've never checked that one out. I did uh, one time. We had this riff in Safala Carnage. Um, when our old guitarist Zach, that I'm doing that Vimana project with, when he left, he was like fucking cease and desist that's my fucking riff. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then we were like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, Steve yeah. wrote this separately, and then we. They both found out that they had both ripped off the <laughs> angel. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that Cease and desist. Of, that's yeah. great, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so we were gonna call the song Cease yeah, yeah. and Desist. Yeah, yeah, dude. But it was a. Uh, it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
Necrophages. Okay. Yeah. That one, that one is out of all the Necrophage riffs, but when I just think of a, of a riff, but otherwise I'm like, I don't know. There's a lot of riffs. So are there. you, are you very <laughs> yeah. fond of pinch harmonics as a bass player? Um, I like, uh, I do like them actually. Uh, I like when the guitarists do them and I like, like being quiet when yeah, they do yeah. them. Like a lot of times I'll do, even if it's like on a, like, uh, there's a song, um, what is it? Cephalic song, Dying Will Be the Death of Me. Mm -hmm. um, or no, no, no. It's um, Peacemaker. Okay. It's like... Right, right. And like on the record, there's bass on it. Right. And like live though, like I, I shut up. You just, yeah, 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 yeah. Because like when, when everybody shuts up and there's room and the pinch harmonics are really super present especially a harmony yeah yeah um they're rad i do i do them on bass sometimes too oh okay, like nice. there's um a track i have on uh, uh job for a cowboy's sun mm. sun eater record and on the track son of nihility and uh it's uh no everybody i've seen them do a cover of it they never do it so i'm, I'm just think assuming that they don't, don't know that it's the bass that's doing it right <laughs> um, but i, I use the 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 Steve Bailey way of doing it instead of the uh, Jocko way. Jocko would kind of do, where basically like you're fretting a left hand note, right? And you do like, uh, he kind of basically asks, uses his thumb as like a node, mm -hmm. right? On the hypothetical, you know, either 12 or 24 frets up. So it'll be like the, you know, hypothetical 30 second fret. And you just use your thumb as like a node and then you mm. pinch it with your, your thing. But the Steve Bailey way I found even better. So I could like use the index finger, the side of the index finger as, and you put the same level of pressure you would put on it for a natural harmonic mm -hmm. and then pluck down here. Oh shit. And you can get, and you can literally just play any line That's when you, weird. when you figure out the spacing of it. Right. Like I can right, play right. like any bass line that I know I can play in, in pinch harmonics. Oh shit. So I have a really a, a cool one in that, um, in that track. It's, um, um, let's see. They like me, dude. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, because you can yeah, slide yeah. them out. And if you have a fretless, that's when they're really oh, good. Okay, you gotcha. Pinch harmonic and then slide it yeah, yeah. down or up or around. Steve Bailey, if you've never checked out his bass playing, he's insane with that shit. I need to it's check so that crazy. out. Yeah. And, yeah, and I ask because I know, like, I, I love pinch harmonics, but he's like. Every time I do it, he just I just see that that turn away. He doesn't want it even <laughs> like I don't I don't mind him. Just don't do him on our song. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always got to get him with the the cemetery gates Pantera. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think of pinch harmonics. I think the what's the most iconic? It's, uh, it's got to be something Zach, Slayer, dude. I was gonna say Zach Wild. Oh, um, that's true. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude that guy i don't even know how he fucking just manages to get them so perfect all the fucking time yeah you know what i mean like yeah. that dude's a fucking monster wooten has this one where he does it's like a on the low string second third fret on the e and he does it's a similar thing where it's like a, it starts as kind of a sl like a slap but then he catches like the back side of his thumb oh wow and gets these rad low ones where it's like a really high harmonic but you're also getting the the low note yeah yeah gotcha. the, like at the, the same time yeah it's yeah it's really cool I'm, and i've never figured out i've tried it a hundred thousand times nice. like, yeah, he he's, he's an alien yeah that dude yeah. yeah um so i always i have questions for i know we're all predominantly love metal and, and heavy music right right so every metal person that i meet or know my one question is what non-metal genre are you into Mm. which is probably a lot because i think we have a very dynamic dynamic range of music like and I, there's i can go months without listening to metal well, you already know yeah yeah i don't uh listen to much metal really okay yeah. i mean I'll, i i will you know it's like when i get back into kind of a more of a regular life at home and stuff and it's been a while when i haven't been on tour like yeah metal it's the the, the cathartic aspect of yeah. it and just slamming you know um but when I'm touring a lot, like I get my fill of it, yeah. you know, at yeah. the venue and stuff. So like I very, like we used to have, even when I first joined Cephalic and we would go tour with like Darkest Hour and, and whatever, right? And we'd have like a, a no distortion rule. Mm. <laughs> yeah. nice. Like when yeah. we're jamming, when we're chilling, like no distortion. Right, and, right, and, right. And, and I like open. That. So I, I love like everything from, 
All right. <laughs> As I'm getting older, even even 20 years ago, I would do it, but I, I really get into all the stuff that my my folks liked. Like I love I love a lot of the 80s like contemporary shit. Fuck yeah, you know? dude. Steve Winwood. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Phil Collins. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, I like Phil Phil Collins era Genesis more than uh, yeah. Peter Gabriel era. Right. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, and then just like tons of uh, I'd say the most listened to record I I probably have if you're able to like add it all up. Um, it's this record called Every Day mm. by uh, the Cinematic Orchestra. Mm. I've it's never just, heard that. It's like just the most chill, awesome, amazing. Um, you know, you could it's like sunset music, but sunrise music. Right. It's two a.m. It's morning. Um, just really, really, really tasty stuff. And they they've done. Um, I think they started obviously getting into some scoring stuff, but it's just mm. really, really killer. That. Um, I like. Uh, I mean, I would use. I would do a lot of like Wu Tang mm-hmm. back in high school. You know. <laughs> A lot of Wu Tang. This keeps on getting better over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a big hip hop oh, lover. A huge hip hop head. Right? Yeah, I can only. I can't do new stuff. Nope. Yeah, I absolutely can't. not. If it's like post two thousand, right, like, right, yeah, right, right. I'm gonna go post two thousand and six because okay. there was still some stuff from the label Def Jux. I don't know if you're familiar with them. No, L- huh? LP, Mr. Liff, Merce, all those kind of guys. Oh, okay. So right around that era, right around two thousand six is when that kind of started to fade away. Aha. Uh-huh. So. I'll give it to 2006. I actually did. I like some of the Rhyme Sayers stuff. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, idea and idea. abilities. Yeah. yeah. Atmosphere. Yep. Atmosphere. Yeah. But that last Idea record before he passed, that's like one of my favorites. It's amazing. Records. Yeah. It's like postmodern grunge hop. Yeah. And he played all the instruments on it, you know, and it was yeah. really cool. I was actually, my, a buddy of mine worked, this guy Andy Geeson worked for Rhyme Sayers in Min- uh, Minnesota. So every time we'd come to Minnesota, he'd just bring me like a bunch of shit from the oh, label. That's Get, fucking got awesome. Like, I had to, I he before we left I got a second one too of the MF Doom hoodie you know like Trevor that's, had that's his, that's his guy right yeah, there yeah dude yeah you are my new best friend yeah. <laughs> I need your number yeah. after this yeah <laughs> I told you it was gonna happen yeah. and it just did yeah <laughs> you've been replaced <laughs> <laughs> but it's it was crazy because like Andy was gonna hook me up with with uh, Michael Larson the, you know idea mm. you know because like he would have bass players come out and yeah. play the live stuff yeah. you know and uh, I was like dude I'm a huge fan of his stuff and I was like if you ever wanted somebody. And then he was like, yeah, I was, you know, he was all into quantum physics and all that mm-hmm. kind of cool shit. Um, yeah. And then he fucking died, you know? Yeah. So that's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. But that's heard, awesome, man. Have like, you ever heard of POS? Um, P- piece, piece of shit? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I said, too. P- exactly. <laughs> and he was like, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, he says it stands for that or pissed off Steven. He, oh, cool. He lets POS do, do a lot of things, but check him out. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of punk, a lot of hip hop. Like he's got a, a rock background and a hip hop. And, one of the most amazing MCs ever. He's in my top five. For oh sure. no shit! Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I feel like uh, that's why you guys are bass players because when you listen to a lot of that shit, like he challenges me with a lot of that stuff, and I'm always like, dude, now I understand like why you play some of the bass lines that you fucking play. Well, hands down, I've always, as a bass player, being in heavier bands, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to not be the root note, follow the guitar player. So I've always brought a little of the hip hop into what yeah. I've always done. Like me, my bass lines are heavy on. On pauses and breaks, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. It'll go melodic, and then I'll just cut it out real quick. Sure, know where, you know what I mean. That yeah. so that's hugely influenced on old school hip hop. Did yeah. you ever listen to uh, some of my favorite bass lines? Uh, this guy, uh, Brother Lynch Hung. No, uh, never heard that shit. No, yeah. dude. So I got like season of the sickness, Brother Lynch Hung, and it's it's like you know fucking brutal cannibal gangster rap. Wow, like, nice. yeah, like it's like you know. It's it's the most brutal lyrics. <laughs> it's like, um, but uh, I think he, I want to say he did a couple. No, that was this other guy, X-rated, that did a couple albums from prison. Mm. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> rapping through the fucking mic. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fucking. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, check out like, um, um, dude, right there, fir- first one. Yeah, um, fuck yeah. All right, so uh, I would see maybe probably rest and piss. I think nice. is this, this raddest baseline, dude. Oh, and this is from song. what era? Like nineties? Yeah, that that record was like ninety four or something. Oh, like okay, that. cool. Season, season of the sickness. Yeah, where the hell would it be? I think I saw it up on the front. Go back up to the. Back. Oh, right here. Holy oh, shit! That's he's still season. dropping shit. He started. He started <laughs> oh, right actually. Sound- ninety five. Yeah, he yeah, started yeah. actually sounding like. I feel like he started getting influenced by Eminem and so it was oh, kind of gotcha. weird because I'm like, what? You're fucking... Yeah. What? It's weird. I mean, I love it. You know, yeah. it's great. Yeah, but- yeah, yeah. But I feel like 
Eminem is one of those artists that has spawned a bunch of like baby versions of him. Like right. that's what you hear a lot now. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, lyrically he came in and just kind of and stylistically kind of changed know, everything, raised a bar. Yeah, yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. But I remember Idea doing that. I remember watching um, the Blaze Battle on HBO back mm-hmm. in like ninety or it was two thousand up in my house in Breckenridge when I lived up there, and and uh, he just fucking smoked everybody. This shit was so f- fast, but hit, his freestyle, yeah, like his freestyles were in. It was a it was a freestyle competition. Yeah, yeah. And he would just it was just insane how he would uh, that skill in and of itself. We used to, I used to do it back in high school. Just we'd get baked to shit and listen to Wu Tang and. Um, you know, I, it was weird. I like, if I got really high, I could like go for a really long time. Yeah. 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 Make, sometimes you got to make up some words or blend some stuff to, yeah. to you know, yeah, to make exactly. it work. Yeah. But, um, I'm trying to think of the new, this other cat that I just heard that was awesome. A recent one or mm-hmm. older? Yeah. The only one that's like modern that I can, can, I feel like stylistically understands where stuff used to come from and, and it represents it as uh freddie gibbs okay yeah, yeah i like freddie gibbs yeah there's this one guy recent but he's not huge but his name is con k-a-n oh dude oh, that guy is knowledge badass. above all nonsense yeah oh cool ridiculous yeah dude okay ridiculous yeah you've got to check that dude out i mean i like some of the new like okay the new kendrick album yeah ridiculous i was okay. never a huge kendrick fan but my daughter showed me that album and i was like Wait a minute, is that the girl from Portishead? Sure as shit, she's on the oh, album. Oh, no and I was way. Like, okay, now I'm in. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, that's rad. Yeah, yeah I mean, it still just goes back to like, I feel like that with almost everything though, like, uh, we're just reaching that age where you're just like, ah, that's just Dude, kid, grump, grumpy the, old man. Right? Kids just don't <laughs> get it. Don't you know? They just don't know what music <laughs> is. And it just, you know. You I, know, I, I try though to, to maintain like listening to new shit. You know what I mean? As metal, much as I can. Yeah. Um, but which, it's easy with heavy heavy music, right? And metal yeah, music. Yeah, but even easy then, to, a lot of the he- I, my yeah. my same complaint for like hip hop is the same as metal. Like a lot of the me- newer metal coming yeah. out now is like a regurgitation of something yeah, that's already. But you been could done. still find that band or that song. Oh, of right? course, hip hop nowadays yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, you, you have to really look search. Right? Yeah, it's just like I feel like the just the it became more about like uh, attitude, like the attitude and the vibe like severely somehow in the past like 15 years whatever severely outweighed talent yeah. mm-hmm. oh 100%. like talent is like not like, even uh, a six nine like yeah. six nine that's a great yeah. example right there man it's like not even the talent's literally not no longer a component these guys couldn't it's, freestyle if they fucking tried yeah i mean they they're just they like they, they, don't, they don't even rhyme anymore right they, they don't exactly. rhyme and they don't ra- they don't actually rap it's mm-hmm. just like talking with auto-tune on mm-hmm. and like repeating words and then like the trap beats all sound the fucking same yeah you yeah know what I mean? yeah that's how i love to go back and just do fucking you know wu-tang forever <laughs> yeah exactly like, man I, iron swords or, or uh liquid swords yeah. excuse me um i was thinking iron man but uh liquid swords jizza that's probably my all-time favorite oh, dude hip hop yeah yeah you have a couple more questions i got one more no, i don't no, know how many you got that was it okay so yeah. my last question for you man um you know, when I think about being just a musician in general, you know, you have your writing, you have your recording, you have your touring. What is your favorite part of being a musician? Mm. Um, I, I would probably say, I'd say there's like, it's kind of split, right? Uh, I think that there's like the writing, recording side of it has the like, the fits, you know, hearing something finished. Right. You know, like these ideas that you kind of had that were just from the ether. They were just nothing. And then bringing them into reality and hearing the finished product. Right, And right. then it going out and people like sort of enjoying it or whatever and validating that yeah. work. Um, but the top thing overall, I would just say, is like then, you know, playing live and having the energy cycle complete. Right, right. You know, where like, oh, okay, this, the writing, the music, recording it, putting it out, promoting it, et cetera, going on tour, going on stage, playing the stuff, but then having the energy come back from the crowd. Right, it's like right. The, the final culmination of the, of the process. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's yeah. the, when the cycle's complete is like. I couldn't now agree I'm, more. Yeah, yeah. When you're getting the energy back from people, you know, right, that's right. where I like, I think like I've even. I've, you know, I've always loved playing very large fests and, and they're amazing. That's awesome. Right. But there's something about like just the, the actual, uh, 
energetic properties of playing, you know, a thousand cap room mm-hmm. as opposed to like a, a, a 10,000 person fest or more or whatever that like that it's like electric. It's like right. palpable. Like you literally feel it and get charged from it. You yeah, know, yeah. We went and did this, this tour down in South America um, back in 2018 and it was just ruthless. I mean, it was t- 26 flights in 23 days. Oh, wow. You know, 20, yeah, 23 shows and just like so little time to do anything and, mm-hmm. and you're at the airport you know at five in the morning every day and you're getting no sleep but the fans down there were so oh, yeah. fucking insanely rabid and just like every night like no matter how tired you were you feel like a three-year-old that hasn't had a nap in yeah. a year <laughs> yeah. and like they would just fucking charge you they would charge you the fuck up to right. get enough yeah. energy to go to the next place awesome so that side of it i think is like kind of like the yeah, I mean, it almost works. It's kind of the same answer for both sides of the recording and the live side of it. Is like the when the circle's complete, circle is complete, yeah. it comes back and people are like, "Wow, we love this! Right. You know, thank yeah. you for making it." And you're like, "Oh, all right." It's right. the culmination of all the hard work finally right. just like coming to fruition. Yeah. yeah. While while we're any project I've been a part of while we're recording, always on my mind is I can't wait to play these live. I'm a live right. guy. I yeah. Fucking love playing. I'll play. I could play show every day. Yeah. I love it. So that's yeah. It's yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yep. Um, so as we wrap up, I know, uh, is there any like shout outs? I know you got your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Got YouTube. Um, I just turned my Instagram back on. Oh, nice. Uh, just cause I have some stuff that's going to be coming out. Um, that I just definitely, I mean, it was a nice, it was good to take a break from. Yeah, me. for sure. Um, you know, cause that whole side of the business can be, you know, I mean, I grew up watching the Pantera videos, you know, and yeah. like, that's what it was about. Like, I want to go and like, you know, destroy hotel rooms and mm-hmm. light off fireworks in each other's bunks and <laughs> melt each other's sunglasses in the microwave and like right. do a, do a, a pot, you know, an interview or something and then go home and not have to, you know? Right. And now it's kind of like, mm, you know, it's like after in the, you know, a, after they ate the fruit in the garden and they're like, now you're going to work. There's no this. going back. Yeah. Right. So now it's like, Oh no, you're going to p- work every day as right. a musician. You're going to have to post something every single day. And you're only as relevant as what you posted today. Right. You know, right. Right. You exactly. post last week, got a hundred thousand views. Like, cool. Nobody, what'd you post today? Um, but, um, but it is cool. And I'm kind of like, just trying to be like, well, you know, it's got, it's, po- it's just a tool like anything yeah. else. And it's got its positive side. So I did that. That's Nick Shins. Pretty much it's Nick Shins on, on everything. N I C K S H I N Z. Okay, cool. So YouTube, um, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, fucking every other thing. All those one. other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll have some, some cool stuff coming out, um, uh, on all that stuff. I guess you could probably might follow everything should be centrally located from there. I need to get one of those link trees. Oh yeah. 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 Like, uh-huh. oh, here, which one Put of the everything. eight bands do you want to think? Yeah. I'm not listening to any of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Awesome, man. Like I'm looking forward to it. You know, like that, that turned me on to your YouTube channel and oh, cool. I saw a couple of those videos. You fucking great shit. dude. Yeah. Thanks man. When he saw it and then he sent it to me and I was like, fuck, I do suck. <laughs> <laughs> was it the Purdy shuffle? Yeah. That, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. that was so yeah. good. Dude. Yeah, I have like, uh, there's a bunch I found, I dug through and I found a bunch of other amazing Bernard Purdy videos. Oh, did you? He's doing that similar thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be so fun to make a series. Dude, fuck yeah, dude. It's just like, it's so much work. Yeah. You know? Dude, I could, yeah, I could imagine. And it's all, you know, I mean, you know, YouTube now, like in order to get re-monetized because I didn't do anything for a couple years, so now to get re-monetized, you got to read all their little things. Yeah. So it's like, pain in the ass. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. It's like every one of those videos is 80 to a hundred hours of work. Gotcha. For, for what? Yeah. For nothing. For nothing. You know? exactly. I mean, but it's not nothing because people enjoy it and I love that. And that's like what it should be about. But right, right. Like dividing your time up these days. is yeah. like, man, I gotta, you know, get dude, some health insurance. At the <laughs> beginning of this year, I was, yeah, no, for real, dude. I think at the beginning of this year, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do one video a week. Yeah. Now it's like, Every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do one a month. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. I, I do a video every day, but mine are nowhere near on that scale. <laughs> I know, but I think, that's mo- I think that's more important, though. I think it's like it, being able to, to, you know, I was talking to my uh, my buddy down in Australia who's got a pretty big, uh, like, iRacing, Sims racing uh, YouTube thing. That's awesome. And he's like, the, the way things are kind of going now is he's like, you have to be able to have it be somewhat visually engaging. Yeah. Right? But... um more not now it sounds like that people want to kind of put it on and have it be background right stuff. right so right. like you can't have no visuals yeah mm-hmm. right but like to do it in a way where 
it's feasible for you to create consistently, right? As opposed to making like really high art, but you, that know, you can only do once every two, you know, yeah. right? But exactly. you know what? Though mine is not crazy, right? So uh, my my toy channel is called Plastic Realm Toys. I just basically do a video of, of my collection, right? So one oh, sweet. one toy every day. So I I put edits, transitions, like I try to make it look cool, right? Right. And I get like you know a couple hundred views here and there and you got these assholes on youtube that do this with their fucking phone yep <laughs> that's <laughs> two three thousand views what they took yeah. me a fucking hour and yeah. a half yeah years. this bitch walked up and went seven thousand <laughs> views God well, damn. did you did you see the pepe show you the the rough cut of the new king video no 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 okay not yet. it's gonna be cool i think i need to see it. that's right yeah that's right. Did, you guys uh, are working on that yeah we did uh um it was pepe's idea actually because the song's about you know, Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, war vet and you know, haunting visions of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was just like, oh, this is kind of heavy, you know? And then Pepe's like, what if we have kids play the, the actors? And I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's yeah. almost more dark. Right. Yeah, right. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And then we we're like, how do we kind of take the edge off of it? And he was like, GI Joe's. And we we're like, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So it's kind of like team America. Yeah. That's G. great. Joe dude. Vietnam yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it should be done. Awesome. Should be done this. It. Yeah. It should be done this week actually. Cause oh, nice. uh, their management was like, oh, I've got that fucking thing done. Yeah. 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 yeah dude, I'm I like can't a, wait. I'm like a, one of those perfectionists where I'm like, no, I can like, it's good right now, but like, give me another like 50 hours and we can really make it something. <laughs> right. Right. You know, but I think it's that this is that conversation to be like mm, next time. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, that's awesome, man. Um, one thing I found by the way on this, on that tip, dude, the shorts, I get more money on the monetization of the shorts than I do the long fucking yeah. videos. But yeah. anyways, I just had to tell you that before Oh, I, I think forgot. I saw, remember Davey 504, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I, he, uh, the last time I checked, like he went away forever and then they came back and it was all shorts. Oh. Because he's like, oh, think how long it takes him to make those 15 minute videos. Dude, right. If you get the same monetization making a 60 second video. Yep. Yeah, but yep. still, it, it's still a crapshoot. My channel is nothing but shorts, right? Cause yeah. What works against me in the in the the toy game is I'm an in the box collector. Okay. I do not open shit, so uh, nobody wants to see some old dude with like this is my fucking box. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So right. it's like, can you do two? Just buy two of everything. One that's open. One. <laughs> that's what I've always said. My wife won't let me. <laughs> 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 it gets pricey after a while. <laughs> I can, but I mean, I always get so really good at resealing it all, dude. Um, well, we, actually, in high school, he got pretty tell. good at that. I yeah. dude, I, I fucking did. Yeah. But they make it harder now. You got the clamshells. Yeah, and that's true. They make it harder, so yeah, um, yeah. You just got to get the machine, like your own, yeah, uh, <laughs> rotoform, yeah. like packaging, <laughs> right, right, like, exactly. redo it perfectly. <laughs> I just, like, I just think about all the old, old collectors, right? And you got Star Wars shit going for fucking thousands of dollars because it's in the box. Yeah, right? of so course. No, the box is my, like such a difference, dude. I've got one toy right now that's going for about seven hundred. I paid fourteen bucks for it, wow. but out of the box, some dude's selling it for like one hundred and fifty. Yeah. So yeah. Have you ever, uh, real quick, have you ever microwaved a transformer? No, sir. That's that. No, sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to. That I was talking about this last night because um, we were seeing all the Barbie stuff in, in yeah, Hollywood, yeah, yeah. Hollywood the other night and. Uh, um. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I used to melt all kinds of shit. My sister's Barbies in the, y yeah, in the microwave, yeah. <laughs> melt transformers. And I'm like, that's the final transition. <laughs> you never go, you were like a, a jet in this, this rad alien robot guy, and now you're a plate. Fucking you know? pile. <laughs> that's awesome, <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> um, so, on that note, dude, first of all, just thank you so yes, much. Yeah, thank of course. You. I thank like, you, man. can't tell you how much I appreciate you yeah, taking absolutely. the time to come out here, man. Yeah, thank you. thanks for having me. This is fun. Of course, man. Good dudes, good and conversation. Absolutely, man. And look forward to working on more of the the King stuff with you guys. Yeah, for sure. Yep. I look, I look forward to that all bass album. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to send you that. Um, I'll yeah. send you that uh, Ain't Matter record. And yeah. Check it yeah. out and be like, this. it's all yeah. bass. There's no I'll get your number right now when we're done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for and awesome. then, uh, but yeah, man, uh, thank you, man, and uh, I look forward. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be heading out tonight to see you guys. Okay, cool. So sweet. Oh yeah, I need to turn in the guest list. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you so yes. much again, yeah. everybody. Nick Shins. Check them out everywhere. If you guys uh, are, in, oh well, no, you won't see this tonight. Never mind. I was going to plug the show. <laughs> yeah, no shit, man. Hey, come to the show when you see this last yeah, night, yeah. exactly, or whenever it was. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Till next time. Bye. 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 Bye.